Welcome to another video. Welcome to another video. This is Value Tech Sense, and I know you guys have been waiting for this video. Sorry about the wait. Well, the wait is over, all right? This is the 2020 slash 2021 Vizio PQX on the new firmware, all right? On the new firmware, and it is legit. All right, it is all the way legit. All right, everybody that's new here, all the new subscribers, one thing y'all need to understand about me is I'm in no hurry to just pump out aimless videos, all right, just to be putting out videos. It takes me a while to put videos out because I wanna give y'all the most thorough information I can give you, all right? I, don't, I do not have to return this TV. I've had this TV Basically, since launch, it is my main TV because it is that dope and that legit. All right, so I've had the firmware update for a while now. I feel like I know enough about the update to give y'all the most information so you know exactly what's in this update and how dope it is. All right, so we're just gonna get right into it. First off, let's talk about the menu system. All right, let's start with the inputs. Let's start with the inputs. I'm gonna hit the input button. You can see they're on the left side of the screen now. Everything's on the left side of the screen. It used to be at the top. You had to go left to right. It was very slow uh, moving. This is very snappy, very fast. Like I said in my other video, I mean, they basically gave you a firmware update and gave you a new TV, guys. I mean, this is so much better than before. I am using every last one of my inputs, guys. Every last one of them. I'm gonna to go to input one. All right, in input one, I have my receiver. I have my receiver because that is where your eARC port is. So if you have a home theater system or you know you got an eARC uh, sound bar or whatever you want Dolby Atmos, you want that good lossless audio, you have eARC port in number one and that is where I have my receiver. All right, let's go to input again. I'm gonna go down. This is my 4K Blu-ray player, all right? I got that in input number two. Got that in input number two, so I can watch movies uh, with the ER connected through the receiver and get that, very, that, get that good cinematic experience, all right? I'm gonna go down to input number three. Input number three, as you can see, we have the Xbox Series X armed up, ready to go. All right, in number three, I'm gonna go down to four. PlayStation 5 is connected. All right, PlayStation 5 is connected. Like I've said in many of my other videos, all right, in many of my other videos, uh, Vizio had this figured out from day one. Their first 2.1 implementation, they gave you eARC in a separate port in number one and gave you two 4K 120 hertz ports in three and four. All right, so I got both consoles hooked up and eARC hooked up and you got TVs coming out in 2022 that still don't have this figured out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is my review 2.0 or maybe we just call it a deep dive on the Sony A95K QD OLED TV. There are two HDMI 2.1 inputs, one of which is the eARC input. Today we are gonna unbox, set up, and get first impressions of the Hisense U8H TV. Elsewhere on the back of the TV, we've got four HDMI ports, and it appears two of them are what we would call HDMI 2.1 ports, but more specifically, two are rated for 4K at 120 hertz, one of which is an eARC port, and we've heard this story before, haven't we? All right, so if you bought this TV on the strength of my video, salute to you. Like I said, like I've always said, you got the right TV. All right, so another thing, all right? I am controlling the PlayStation with my Vizio remote. All right, Vizio remote controlling the PlayStation. Okay, let me go to my Blu-ray player. We are still on the Vizio remote. You can control your Blu-ray player with your Vizio remote, all right? You get it hooked up through the CEC and you can control it with your Vizio 
remote. This is the receiver. All right, so I have everything hooked up in each port and it switches seamlessly, guys. All right, no glitches, nothing, all right? I can play PlayStation, I can play Xbox, I can go to my 4K Blu-ray player, no problem, all right? Now, all your streaming services, all right? I do not waste any of my inputs on a Fire Stick. I don't waste it on any streaming device because I use SmartCast, all right? I use SmartCast. So all of my streaming services are right here. I don't know why people be tripping about these operating systems, about this smart cast, bro. It really ain't that deep. It is not that deep. If I want to watch Netflix, I go right here. I can either hit the hot key on the remote and automatically pull up Netflix. I do not have to go to smart cast. But everything that I watch is right here. Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Hulu, Prime Video, YouTube, Sling, Peacock, Paramount Plus, Stars. I mean, you name it, it's all right there. I mean, I don't know what the big deal is why people make so much fuss about going in here and just turning something on and watching it, all right? When I'm watching House of the Dragon, I just go HBO Max, watch it, all right? If I'm watching football, go to Sling, watch it. If I go to Netflix, everything I need is right here as far as streaming devices. Well, streaming services, it's all right here in SmartCast. It's snappy, it's quick, it's simple. None of that extra stuff. I can just go straight to it, guys. All right, now you can go to it through the input button or you can just hit home on your remote control and go straight to it or you can push one of the hotkeys. All right, very simple, very easy. It's just, I don't know what the big deal is. All right, but it is dope. All right, it is definitely dope. Now, let's talk about picture quality. Let's talk about picture quality and I'm gonna start with HDR10. All right, HDR10, it slaps, all right? I mean, it just, it just slaps, all right? They definitely improved the picture quality. When I thought that it could not be improved at all, it's definitely improved, all right? You just gotta watch the TV, mess with the settings, and give you, I mean, just, I'm looking for the best picture I can get, okay? And the best picture, all right, the best picture that you want is to have good popping colors with no clipping all right you want to see every detail you want to see all your shadow detail the local dimming algorithm on this tv slaps all right black levels i mean crazy crazy black levels all right now you see a lot of videos people go out there anytime they want to show blooming they're going to go in there they're going to pull up some subtitles they're going to put up pull up some um you know, pause menus. They're going to pull up some ending credits, stuff like that. Logos on a black screen. Dude, ain't nobody watching that. You feel me? Nobody's watching that. All right. When you're looking at a movie, when you're playing a game, when you're in real content, you don't see none of that. The fact that you got to actually create a situation just to show it shows how good the local dimming is because you got to actually create a situation to bring it out. But when you're watching television, when you're watching movies, when you're playing your games, you really don't see it. Now, everything you're watching right here is straight HDR10 through the SmartCast, all right, through SmartCast app on YouTube. And the HDR10 settings that I am using currently right now is in the description. So go to the description. There's the settings, all right? Use them. Let me know what you think. All right, I'm gonna do another video later explaining my settings, how I come up with them, and why I choose the settings the way that I do. I'm gonna walk y'all through all of that so you can do the same thing and create your own picture, all right? But these are the settings I'm currently using. I'm not gonna go into any deep video about that right now because I'm just giving you an overview of the update. Let's talk about SDR, all right, SDR. I've been watching football, all right? I've been watching, um, I mean, Peacock, I've been watching all kinds of stuff. Dude, it, is, it slaps, all right? Everything on here slaps. What I got playing on the screen right now is um, my football settings when I was watching football. Basically, it's, it's my SDR settings. I don't have a separate sports setting from my SDR settings. These settings are in the description, all right? Labeled SDR, put them in. Try them out, let me know what you think. When you watch football this weekend, all right, when football's on, pop these settings in, let me know what you think, but it slaps. All right, let's talk about Dolby Vision, 
all right? Dolby Vision. Now, Dolby Vision is just one of my favorite HDR formats. I do have those settings in the description. All right, so everybody looking for settings, I actually put them in the description. Now, these Dolby Vision settings are the settings that I use when I'm streaming. I have a separate set of settings, uh, Dolby Vision settings for when I'm using a Blu-ray player, all right? I will do those in a separate video, but for streaming purposes, all right, Disney Plus, you know, uh, HBO Max, these are the settings I am using, and the Dolby Vision like I said, dude, it slaps, man. I don't, I, there's no reason to go out there and spend thousands of thousands upon thousands of dollars on a TV that's going to barely give you anything better than what's on this TV. Like, literally. You literally got to put the TV under a microscope to say, look, this is a little bit better. It's not $1,000 better. It's not $2,000 better. It's not $500 better. All right? It's not. We've came to the point in TV technology where it has literally plateaued, all right? It's literally plateaued. So if you're out there trying to spend extra money to get more picture quality these days, dude, diminishing returns is real, all right? It is real. And that's why I'm talking to you guys about value. You know what I mean? I mean, whatever TV you decide to get, you know, you're pretty much gonna get good picture quality, but this Vizio for the price and everything that it does, it's undefeated, all right? I can buy any TV that I want, but for what? It's not that I can't have one or go buy one, I, what for, all right? This TV slaps, guys, all right? So, my Dolby Vision settings, all right? Dolby Vision settings for streaming is in the description, and I will do a separate video for my 4K Blu-ray Dolby Vision settings. All right, now, let's talk about gaming. Let's talk about gaming. You wanna talk about three-dimensional, you wanna talk about gaming experience that blows my mind every time I play? Like, literally? I mean, just look at the footage, all right? This footage I got playing in the background, I literally just showing off how dope, how amazing gaming is on this tv all right you got dolby vision gaming you got low latency dolby vision all right somebody asked me in the comment section about something on the xbox that says you know there may be latency on certain tvs not this tv but xbox is just putting it out there that you got tvs out there like sony and uh some of the other TVs that's still using the old MediaTek chip where you got to go into the menu, you got to take it off of Dolby Vision and put it on enhanced format so you can have low latency, all right? On the Vizio, no need, all right? It's Dolby Vision and low latency. You don't have to switch any input because it works. In Dolby Vision, you have low latency, all right? No problem. Easy peasy. Xbox, phenomenal. PS5, dope. I gotta do a serious gaming video to show you how to get the most out of this TV for your games. Because you want that HDR that just leaps off the screen. You wanna feel like you're in the game. I mean, it's so immersive the way uh, the highlights come off the screen. All right, but you have to set it up right, all right? I will be dropping those videos very soon. I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of this update all right everything is snappy everything is quick everything is fast i mean it is amazing guys and everybody when you get those settings that is in the description all right and you look at my local dimming settings and i have them set to high all right they used to be set on medium i have them set to high now because they have improved the local dimming algorithm all right uh local dimming on high is going to give you more precise local dimming all right i used to use medium because when you used to put it on high it light your black bars up all right so when they said they improved the black bars in the uh, update literally when you put your local dimming on high which is a better local dimming algorithm for uh most content all right it will not light up your black bars black bars stay black local dimming looks dope i mean it's just amazing guys so this is just a quick brief overview letting y'all know about this um 
this uh, new uh, update that's came out. I will go into more in-depth gaming video because I don't want to make this video too long. We will talk about the new gaming menu that's on there. I want to do that separately because you guys know that my videos, I can just run with it and this, uh, this video will be an hour long, all right? We're not doing that, but just know that what you see with the gaming footage, the SDR footage, the HDR10 footage, and the little bit of Dolby Vision footage I put on here, it slaps. All right. And one more thing before I let y'all go, man. To the to the dude, uh, I've been going back and forth with in the comments section. Uh, the dude that, that asked me, should he get the, the Hisense UAH or should you get the Vizio? And I told you to get the Vizio. And you asked me what I reviewed the UAH and I told you I'm not buying the UAH. Right. I told you to get the Vizio. And you told me other people, other TV reviewers, or review other TVs, and I only review uh, Vizio. Listen, G, I'm not a TV reviewer. Let's let's get that straight first and foremost. I am not a TV reviewer. All right. Uh, the reason that I talk about Vizio the way I do, and I make uh, videos about Vizio, is because when I was in the market for a television, right. I wanted a QLED TV, a bright ass TV. I wanted to have all the gaming features. I wanted all of these things. And when I bought my Vizio, that TV was the only TV at the time that delivered on everything that I wanted out of a TV. All right, the Hisense, the TCL, the Sony's, uh, all the other TVs that are non OLED because I was not interested in an OLED, period. All those other TVs were struggling with the 2.1 HDMI. They did not have VRR. If they had VRR, the uh, local dimming didn't work. They didn't have a game mode for Dolby Vision. All right. Um, everything that I wanted out of a TV was delivered in the Vizio when all these other TVs were struggling with it. Did you uh, see uh, FOMO stream earlier? But the T Today? Yes, today. Uh, the Sony X900H and its VRR situation. Oh, nope, nope. I'm yeah. not caught up. I am not caught up. So pretty much they uh, had to pull the update because it was breaking uh, local dimming. What? You don't say. Mm, that makes sense. I mean, so <laughs> the TCL doesn't work with local dimming and VRR. You don't say. And the Hisense didn't work with, with local dimming and VRR. You don't say. Yeah, and then to your point with the VRR... And um, also, when they did that with Sony, kind of misleading people a little bit on what they're doing with their uh, 4K 120 hertz, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a shame, you know. I don't I don't get it. Yep. Yeah. So this is a tweet from Vincent Tio of uh, HDTV Test, and mm -hmm. you know he is also pointing out the half resolution issues, and it's pretty much anyone with a MediaTek HDMI chipset. Um, that doesn't have an add-on processor like the uh, Sony X90J, 95J, 80J, and uh, A90J. If it, if they don't have that, then it's cutting the resolution in half. So right. that means Panasonic, uh, Hisense, TCL, all of them are affected by this. The reason all these other YouTubers and all these people out here don't talk about Vizio, and I'm on an island talking about Vizio by myself, is because all of these people on YouTube is putting out videos every day, every other day. When they on YouTube, they clocking in, all right? This is their job. This is what they do. That's why they make content all the time. This is not a job for me, all right? This is not a career move. I get on YouTube out of the love for it, all right? Just to put information out and help people find what they're looking for, all right? give you information like I gave you in the comments section all right one thing you got to understand about these youtubers all right and this ain't no shade I'm just talking to you when they're on YouTube they at work all right why do you go to work to make money all right when they on YouTube they're on YouTube to make money all right they clocking in so when they clocked in all right they trying to move units all right, I could care less if you buy the Vizio or don't buy the Vizio. You asked me a question and I gave it to you straight. All right, you said you were looking for a TV for next gen uh, gaming. All right, PS5, Xbox Series X. So why would I tell you to go out and get the Hisense U8H over the Vizio 
when the U8H right now currently is fake 4K 120. Another drawback of this TV is for gamers, or actually the execution of the gaming features, right? It's technically capable of 4K 120. However, 4K 120 is half resolution. What? You don't say. All right. Fake 4K 120, all right? It was the same thing last year. TCL, Hisense, uh, even when, when Sony came out with their first 2.1 TV, it was fake 4K 120. It was half resolution, all right? Last year, the Hisense had the same problem. What's going on, guys? It's Quizzy Dog here, and in today's video, it's just like a quick little information session in regards to some user feedback that I've seen in my comments and all over the internet when it comes to the Hisense U8G or U88G. Now it's no surprise the feedback has been there for months speaking about the degraded picture quality when using this panel in 4K 120 hertz. Now all of the user findings are suggesting that right now the vertical resolution is actually cut down in half or by 50% when enabling the 120 hertz. You don't say. This year, same problem by now you probably know the uh needs some firmware updates to address its half resolution 4k 120 you don't say why would i recommend that to you all right the reason i got on youtube is so you guys would think for yourself so you would do research all right it don't take a lot to figure out what you want you told me a i'm looking for a tv because i want gaming uh on next gen all right if it's gaming next gen that's case closed for me because I don't have those problems on the Vizio. I've been gaming 4K 120 since day one. All right, got videos proving it, showing it, took it out of the box, had 120, all right, 4K. So why would I recommend something else to you? All right, I do not review TVs. That's why I'm on here talking to you about a TV that I bought almost two years ago still today because it's still relevant. And it's still doing everything these other TVs are doing plus more. So when you ask me for my recommendation, that's why I gave it to you, all right? These other guys, they're not going to talk about Vizio because they got alliances, all right? You know, I, I'm not seeking validation from any other content creator, all right? People had information out there about Vizio. Whenever it's about Vizio or something about Vizio, it's a bunch of hate, all right? Nobody wants to review Vizio. Nobody wants to talk about Vizio. Vizio's out there on the island, and I don't mind being on that island because... Vizio delivered on what they said they was going to do, all right? Even when it was thought that Vizio didn't deliver, as soon as there's a problem with Vizio, people want to jump on it. People are quick to jump and say, look what Vizio did. Do you ever fear of missing out on more lies and deception by your favorite TV maker? As if HDMI 2.1 wasn't confusing enough. Now it's Vizio's turn to apologize to the consumer and explain why did you say that it was 48 gigabits per second at launch, way back when, five, six months ago, only for us to discover recently that it's 40 gigabits per second. What I want to know is whose bright idea was it at Vizio to persist with this fiction of 48 gigabits per second? So Vizio knows full well the narrative that what keeps them selling is budget prices, but really good specs. Well, these really good specs are now in question. My question to Vizio is, what the hell is happening over there? How can you, on the one hand, be telling your influencers, right, the people that are helping consumers decide whether or not to buy a Vizio, how can you be telling them information that is completely wrong? You are fake news. They're so disappointing to their customers. They need to apologize for this and apologize for that. That's just a bunch of hating because when it comes to Vizio, you want to come with the negative energy. When it comes to the Hisense that did the same thing this year that they did last year, what do they get? Editor's choice. Come on, man. <laughs> the fuck out of here bro i'm not trying to hear it bro i'm not throwing no shade at nobody if the way you like to find tvs the way you like to search for things you look at people's subscribe accounts and you feel like they're credible because they got a bunch of people following them dude if you want a u8h go buy it all right if you want an a95k go buy it you want an s95b go buy it all right i got the right tv there's no need for me to go out here and get another tv for a few years because I got the right TV. 
And this TV has been doing what all these other TVs have been struggling with. All right. I've been at VRR. Sony just got it. All right. We've been 4K 120. We've been doing it. All right. These other guys ain't talking about it because everything they said about Vizio was wrong. I don't care if they talk about it or not, dude, because it does not matter to me. All right. I'm not seeking the validation of no one. All right. I'm getting on here for y'all. All right. That's it. All right. That's it. The research is simple, man. So if you want to get you a U8H, be my guest. Go get you a U8H. Hopefully they get that issue fixed. Same issue they had last year. They got this year. But nobody's asking Hisense to apologize to their customers for their fake 2.1 TV, right? Nah, they get editor's choice. So with that said, man, more videos are on the way. I am home for a while, so I'm about to hit y'all rapid fire with these videos. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the like button. I got videos coming. All right, so till the next time, guys. Thanks for watching.